Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you like gobbling dots, climbing buildings, shooting invaders, and jumping on platforms, you came to the right channel. Appreciate you tuning in. I've had a blast this week playing and replaying my entire Intellivision homebrew collection. Now, it's only eight games, but I've got some really interesting titles I wanna share with you guys. Now, all of these, none of these are newer titles. These are a little bit older. Um, I got all these as review copies. Before I was really doing YouTube, I got these just to, to write about for my website and for different publications. And I'll post a link uh, in the description of this video to some of my written reviews of these games. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys uh, just an overview of each game and I'm ranking them in order from eight, which is my least favorite of these, to one, which is my favorite and which I think is the most impressive. These are uh, eight interesting homebrew games for the Intellivision. Now I did grow up playing the Intellivision as a lot of you guys know, and it never, when the, uh, the Intellivision was, you know, pretty much done with uh, in the late 80s, it never, you know, there was 125 original games. It never would have occurred to me in a million years that there would be more games to play and some games that were way more impressive than the original titles because of, you know, just these programmers that have really figured out uh, ways to exploit the Intellivision to the absolute max and um, just amazing. There's some great games here. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, bef very briefly though, why don't you hit that subscribe button? That would be super, super helpful to me. I'd appreciate that. All right, let's get to number eight. Now all these games are interesting and have worth and merit and value, but I wanted to put them in order for you guys. Number eight is Brickout. Now I thought I'll also, I'm gonna show you what's inside too, because these uh, homebrew games, they put some interesting stuff inside. The manuals are kind of neat in cases, and a lot of them have the controller overlays and things, so we'll check out the insides as well. Uh, so Brickout, this was actually, uh, sort of fills a hole in your Intellivision collection because this game was supposed to be released back in the day and it was canceled. And the Blue Sky Rangers, I believe, published this game. Uh, and look at it, it's just Breakout. You know, it's just a Breakout clone. And there's no really special features to it. You know, there's no rotary control for it. There's not even a button for speeding up the paddle. You know, you got a paddle back and forth, rebounding a ball up toward these walls of bricks and there's no extra modes and there's no speedier button, no button to make your paddle speedier. So it's not, it's not great, but it is solid and I enjoy playing it from time to time. And it's a decent breakout clone, uh, you know, just for what it is. Brickout, you know, and it fills a hole in your Intellivision collection. And uh, let's take a look inside. It looks just exactly like an original Intellivision game. You know, obviously very faithful uh, to that and Simple manual for a simple game. Just, uh, you know, four pages, basically. But, you know, gets the job done. And uh, comes with a couple of these overlays. So, always a nice bonus here. So that's Breakout at number eight. Now there have been, I don't even know how many in television homebrew games have been published, but, and uh, I, need to, I need to pick up some newer ones, but these are the ones in my collection. And uh, so, and some of these are getting a little hard to find. Some of them are still, you know, you can find them pretty easily on eBay or whatever. Uh, but anyway, number seven is Match Five. Now this is a simple puzzle game where you match five or more pieces in vertical, horizontal, or diagonal lines. Uh, you move game pieces along unblocked paths. Like if you select a piece to move over here, there has to be an unblocked pathway to get to it. And when you line up five or more, they disappear from the screen and you can use bombs uh, to clear gridlocked areas on the board. And um, with each turn, three more pieces are added to the board. So it is challenging and it's not bad. It's a pretty cool little puzzle game. And it's got a neat fold out box here. Pretty cool. And the manual fits very nicely there. And uh, color, lots of information, does a great job of telling you how to play the game, and uh, it's got a couple of these, controller overlays, the cartridge looks pretty neat, you know, 
Electronaut does excellent work. I don't know, I haven't, honestly, I haven't even kept up with the Intellivision homebrew community that much recently. Uh, so I don't know, I don't even know, I want you guys to let me know in the comments what recent Intellivision homebrew games that have come out that you guys really like playing. I'm really behind the curb on this. So that was number seven. Uh, number six of the homebrew games uh, for the Intellivision in my collection would be Space Raid. Now Space Raid, is basically a Zaxxon clone, and it's so much better than Zaxxon for, you know, the Coleco version of Zaxxon for the Intellivision, which really didn't even try to emulate, to truly emulate Zaxxon. It didn't have an isometric perspective. It did have an altitude meter. You know, you can go up and down, and there's an altitude meter, but, and it shoot, you know, you shoot like Zaxxon in the original uh, Coleco uh, Zaxxon for the Intellivision, but it's it's not it's not even close to to being a real uh, Zaxxon port. It doesn't look like it or play that much like it. And uh, but this is pretty decent. It uh, it does play like Zaxxon, and uh, I enjoy it. Um, it does include the rocket enemies and Mobots that the Intellivision version of Zaxxon lacks. And but the game does, uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. But it does sit in the shadow of the awesome Zaxxon for the ColecoVision. But it's cool, it's got some nice graphics. It's got uh, rotating gun turrets for a nice effect. And the uh, cartridge looks like an original Intellivision cartridge. The box is uh, very nicely illustrated here. Let's see what else comes in it. Nice looking manual, good stuff. Once again, in color. And I like that uh, great font on the back there, really cool. And it does come with a couple of controller overlays. Great stuff, guys. And that was published by Collector Vision. My buddy John Lester works for Collector Vision. Great company. Speaking of Collector Vision, next up at number five is Sydney Hunter and the Shrines of Peril. Again, published by Collector Vision. And this is basically Smurf, Rescue, and Gargamel's Castle for the Intellivision. Check it out. Now, in Smurf, Rescue and Gargamel's Castle, you obviously control a Smurf. Well, here you move an adventure hero. You know, you got an adventure hero as he walks along and he jumps over snakes instead of white picket fences. Now, the game does uh, retain some of the horror elements from Smurfs, like skulls, spiders, spider webs, and spooky caves. Now, if you guys didn't play Spur Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle for the ColecoVision back in the day, it was sort of a forerunner of the side-scrolling platformer genre, uh, you know, along with Pitfall and uh, Cabbage Patch Kids Adventures in the Park, of all things. Um, these sort of predated the Super Mario Brothers type gameplay, uh, the side-scrolling platformer, but you know, there were evolutionary steps towards that. And Sydney Hunter, it's pretty cool to be able to play, you know, a uh, sort of adventure-themed version of Smurf Rescue and Gargamel's Castle on your Intellivision. And you know, if you remember Smurf on the ColecoVision, you would sort of push up to jump, and you would push up a couple of times to jump higher. Well, there are separate buttons for high and low jump on Sydney Hunter, which is pretty cool. So let's see what's in the package. Got your cartridge here, classic and television design. And the manual looks good. Very nice cartoonish artwork there. And it is in full color. These homebrew guys just do an amazing job. It's uh, quite remarkable. Again, you got a color, a color. You've got a couple of controller overlays there. Now these are the controls are pretty simple for most of these games, so you don't necessarily need these to remember which buttons to press. But they're neat, and they, uh, you know, harken back to the original on television. So that was number five, and my, you know, humble but proud. Um, in television homebrew collection. So let's get up to number four. Copter Command for, um, which is basically Chopper Command. If you guys played Activision's Chopper Command for the Atari 2600, this is Copter Command. Um, it's basically a port of Chopper Command and it's done very well for the Intellivision. Now your helicopter 
is a little taller than the helicopter and chopper command, but the gameplay is similar. You know, you've got real fast action, you know, fast shooting, and um, it's got auto fire, and it does have a re remix mode. What's really neat, it's got an invincible mode. Now, you know, you're flying back and forth and you're shooting uh, enemies out of the sky, and down below, you're protecting these trucks. And if you're invincible, you know, obviously your game is gonna last longer and you still have to protect the trucks, but you no longer have to worry about getting fired upon. So that adds a new wrinkle to the game. And uh, so yeah, check that out. Copter Command, pretty cool. Let's see what's inside. Again, just, you know, dead ringer for an original Intellivision cartridge. And this says it was copyright and television revolution. And again, you got a couple of uh, overlays. Awesome. Great stuff there, guys. Copter Command at number four. Now, this, is, this game that's number three on my list, I hated to put it down at number three because it's such an amazing game. It's, it's, it's really one of my favorite homebrews, but there are two that are even better for the Intellivision, in my opinion. Uh, but that is Christmas Carol. Now this game is so beautifully done. I hated to put it down, down at number three, but I mean it is just gorgeous. It's a very, it's a obviously a Christmas themed game, but it has a great feeling of winter. It's got a uh, beautiful title screen with a Christmas tree with sparkling ornaments. And uh, the song, the classic Christmas tune, Carol of the Bells plays. And it's just got, it's just so atmospheric. It's a great game to play in the winter around Christmas time or any time of the year. It's a great maze game. You guide Carol uh, around a maze uh, to collect eight presents and she collects candy for extra points. And there's a couple of different maze designs and Carol avoids a snowman and he avoids a Pac-Man ghost. The snowman uh, is deadly and the Pac-Man ghosts will, uh, cause all the presents that you have collected to reappear in the maze. And you can grab snowflakes to stun the ghosts and uh, to confuse the snowman. Now an audio cue will play to alert you that the snowman's gonna come out. I really like when classic games have audio cues. It's kind of an interesting use of sound in games, not only just for, you know, atmosphere or just for, you know, to sound good, it also is for strategy. I like that, that's really neat. So that's uh, Christmas Carol. And it's just such beautiful packaging. I love that fold out box. And it just looks so nice. I love the art. And uh, the cartridge is really neat looking. And again, these were all uh, either sent to me through the mail or given to me at gaming conventions uh, to review. And again, a couple of overlays, really neat. And the manual is very sharp. Almost has like a cardboard cover. It's really, just look at that. Such attention to detail, colorful. And again, this is just an amazing atmospheric, atmospheric game. And it's just, <laughs> pains me to put it number three, but there you go, Christmas Carol. I highly, highly recommend this game. And again, I don't know which one of these how hard uh, some of these are to get since they're a few years old, but you guys can check eBay or whatever, or, or different websites and whatnot uh, that sell games. That was Christmas Carol, love it. All right, let's get down to it. We're at number two, Space Patrol. This is an amazing Moon Patrol port or Moon Patrol clone uh, that actually adds some other worlds you can go to. So not only are you patrolling the moon, it adds Mars, Mercury, and Pluto. And this creates some, you know, different obstacles and some gorgeous colors. This is a really good looking game with reds, browns, greens, yellows, and other colors. Really detailed graphics with mountains and buildings in the background. It's got parallax scrolling. You know, the original Moon Patrol in the arcades was uh, the first or one of the first games with parallax scrolling, and that's maintained here. Just a really nice looking game, nice box. Cool retro style artwork, and um, it's got different obstacles like stalactites, and you know they're falling on you while you're driving through a cave, and space plants, you know things you didn't see in Moon Patrol. It's an amazing game. It's one of the greatest homebrew games ever, up there with Vector Pilot for the Vectrex and Medieval Mayhem. 
uh, for the Atari 2600. It's just phenomenal. Just an amazing port of Moon Patrol and it controls really well and you're you know speeding up and slowing down and shooting up and shooting straight ahead and jumping over obstacles you know a lot of, it's kind of like if you can walk and chew gum at the same time now there's i did a recent video where i'm playing moon patrol you know reimagined moon patrol for the amico and i'm not playing that great in it and a couple of friends of mine have messaged me a guy even sent me a text saying, you know, I'm really ashamed of your Moon Patrol <laughs> abilities. Now, I'm decent at Moon Patrol. I kind of uh, botched it uh, playing the Amico version because I was still getting used to the controller and I was kind of under the spotlight. Maybe I was nervous, I don't know, but I didn't do great. But I'm decent at Moon Patrol and at Space Patrol. Let's see what's inside. Pretty cool little cartridge there. Awesome. And again, it's got a couple of uh, controller overlays. And let's see what the book looks like. Box art, same as the box art, of course. Again, colorful, lots of details. And this is just, there's obstacles in the game. Just an amazing game. Wow, I reckon that, uh, recommend this for anybody who is an Intellivision fan and loves shooters. All right, guys. As phenomenal as Christmas Carol and Space Patrol are, there's one game I have in my collection that is even better. And that is DK2 Arcade. Unbelievable game. Just amazing. It's basically Donkey Kong, and it's got faithful sound effects. It's got excellent graphics. And it's got the intro and the high, how high can you get screens. Really, really cool. Now, what's interesting about this game, you control Mario. But you can also control Mario's younger brother, Tony. Who's faster, who leaps further, and he jumps while holding the hammer. Now, there's no Luigi here. But you can, go, you can also control Mario's older brother, Bruno. He's slower, but he can take short falls without dying, and he can hold a hammer while climbing. Really cool, different wrinkle on Donkey Kong. Really mixes up your strategies there, and it's cool to be able to play, you know, in the options mode, you can select one of these characters to play. And it's got challenging new levels that stay true to the spirit of the arcade game while adding new challenges. It's just amazing, and in, and in a way, DK2 Arcade sort of makes up for the awful Coleco version of Donkey Kong for the Intellivision. Now let's take a look inside of this phenomenal game by Electronite. Uh, folds open there, I love that. Just really great. Back of the box looks great. And the cartridge, there you go. Pretty spiffy. And it's got four controller overlays. I don't know if they meant to put four in there, but I guess if you wear out a couple, you've got two extras. And the manual really, really goes into great detail of uh, gameplay and everything, and just phenomenal. Enemies, barrels, flames, spring, balls of gas, and even cement pies are all deadly to the player. And check out all these different levels. Great stuff, guys. DK2 Arcade for the Intellivision Home, my favorite Intellivision homebrew, and definitely one of my three or four favorite uh, homebrews for any system of all time. Right up there with uh, Space Patrol and Medieval, Medieval Madness and Vector Pilot. All right, guys, what I want to know from you guys is what is your favorite Intellivision homebrew? And if you don't have a favorite Intellivision homebrew, maybe you don't have any, what's your favorite Intellivision game of the original 125? I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'd also love it if you could subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I definitely need to get some more Intellivision homebrew games. I only have eight. Uh, I need to check out the modern homebrew scene, modern the last year or two worth of homebrew games for the Intellivision. I love that. And if you could put also in the comments what homebrew games for the Intellivision 
that I don't own, would you guys recommend? That would be awesome. All right, guys, I will talk to you in another video. We will see you later. If you're a fan of my work, you might want to consider supporting me on Patreon. For just a low fee each month, you get a lot of extra content. Another way to support the channel and my writing career is to buy books direct from me, including the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, the Classic Home Video Game Series, it's like an encyclopedia set, and this massive bad boy, the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A through L. I will put links in the description of this video where you can buy books direct from me and where you can support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it.